Hey everybody, Christy Glass here with a finished object for you. This is the bouquet by Junko Okamoto. And I just, yeah, I have a lot to say about this sweater and I cannot wait to tell you all about it. I wanted to start by saying that Manos del Uruguay reached out to me probably about a year ago and offered up their yarn to me if I wanted to use it for a project. I used some of their yarn in a sweater called the Moon Sweater last spring and when I decided I wanted to knit this, I thought, you know, I really, really wanted to knit it in Maxima. And so I asked them and they kindly sent me some yarn. So this is the Maxima from Manos del Uruguay. It's a bit fuzzy. <laughs> it's got some fuzz on it. So this is the base, which is the color Prince. And this is the pop, which is the color Shocking. And I love them so much together. I think they're so perfect and as you can see I had a bit extra of the prints I actually almost made it but then I had to skein up this second skein and then I've used some of this on a little amigurumi uh, am amigurumi toy that I knit f or crocheted for a neighbor she was having a birthday and so I thought you know I think she's gonna like this pink so let's talk about this pattern I think this only has one size which I'm sure is off-putting for many knitters and I don't know what to say about that except I do I do have something to say I was just talking to Nancy Marchand on a virtual Vogue Knitting Live interview so you'll never be able to find it or see it again so unless you were there you missed it but she was talking about how when she was growing up in the 60s and 70s her mother would get these knitting magazines and they would be certain patterns in certain weights of yarns and they only had access to certain stores which only had certain weights of yarn and often they did not match and so she had to spend a lot of her childhood just altering the patterns to fit what they had access to so i think that would be very hard to do with this pattern but if you wanted to take it on as a challenge to make it smaller or larger i guess you could do that if you don't like floating, if you don't like color work, and if you don't like charts, you should probably stop watching now. This is just has a lot going on. I, I hope I can show you while still wearing it. The first thing I wanna point out is that the chart, the first chart has three repeats. And at first it feels counterintuitive, but then you realize that one of the designs is in the front and center, and the other two sort of split the back. You see them in the back here? Even before you get to the chart, we have to begin at the beginning. So this is the second, I think, pattern I've done by Junko, and she does this tubular cast on, which feels so counterintuitive. I ended up finding a video, I think her name's Nancy. I'm going to find it and link it under this video, but she has a really great video on how to do this. And I think that there's even a link to a tutorial in the pattern that might be hers, maybe that's how I found it. Neither here nor there, but it is a little bit fussy and this is a bit tight. So I don't know how I could have done it better or differently, but it is a tight, it's tight going on. Like I have to take my glasses off before I put this on if I'm wearing my glasses, but I like it. I like, it's fine once it's on, it's just a little tight. So then remember the chart, it has three repeats and the floats are in the front of the work. So you can see, all of this float action, it's not on the wrong side, it's on the right side. And it goes pretty well for a while here up top, but then when you start having very, very long sections, you have to figure out what treatment you want to do for your floats. What I was doing was catching them every so often, and what happened was, you can almost still, still see it a little bit, it started puckering, it looked just like this. It was a pucker situation. And I tried ironing it out, I tried blocking it out, and it just didn't work. There was another technique that I heard of, I think it was on fruity knitting, and I don't know what it's called. I can't promise I'm gonna be able to find it underneath, to link underneath this video, but maybe ask around. I had some friends knitting this at the same time as me and they were not successful using that fruity knitting technique, but maybe you would be. So I'm just gonna throw that out to you as well. And also I'm thinking about 
a video I did with Susan Rainey and she talks about invisible float catching as well. So she may be a video to watch and maybe find it on her blog. What happened with me is once I had blocked it and was it was unsuccessful getting these ripples to block out, I ended up cutting everything inside and knotting everything together with surgeon's knots, well, what I think is a surgeon knot, hopefully it was right. And I will show you the inside in just a second, but that's what I ended up doing to make it all get smoothed out. So many people have knit this and I don't know. I mean, I just, I've never heard of how challenging it is to have this float situation. So you must know this going in. Once you're done splitting for the sleeves, there's more charts and these charts are tiny. They're so small. So I would suggest maybe printing them bigger if you have that ability. I was on my phone. So not only was it small to begin with, but then it was on my phone and it was challenging, especially when you get to the second half, there's a different chart for the front and the back. What I love about that is they are different and you can see all the different flowers that you make. I love the chicken. I don't think I, I really don't think I made any mistakes on the chart. I'm pretty shocked actually that I was so consistent getting my chart correct. I have a bit of a mathematical and a rhythmic mind and I am really comfortable counting things. So this was actually a pretty fast knit for me. And then once the charts are over, you just have the sleeves to go. I have noticed in a few finished objects on Ravelry that people add maybe another chicken on the sleeve. So that's a choice you, you can make. When I put these yarns together, I didn't notice a big difference in the lots, but you might be able to see that my purple kind of fades. It starts a bit lighter and gets a bit stripy and darker on the bottom here. So that's just something to keep in mind. Make sure you have enough of your color pop, your contrast, and make sure you like the placement of your yarn. It doesn't bother me. I think it's just kind of like artsy and cool and adds character to this finished object. Let me show you the inside now. Speaking of the Nancy Marchand interview I just did, she was talking about how she entered some of her pieces in the county fair and how they commented on the inside of her sweater, which is a thing. They look on the inside to see how neat you are. I cannot imagine what they would think of this knit. Okay, so you can see all of my knots. <laughs> so imagine the this yarn floating across this whole section and what that would do. And you can see that I did a combination of knotting and weaving in the ends wherever it was puckering. I'm just really, really glad I could do that because it saved the sweater. And I would have been so disappointed to have done all of this work and then not be able to wear it smoothly on my body. So wherever there was puckering, I just snipped it. And you can see I made pretty long floats here in everything else. So that, I don't wanna say don't do this pattern, you should do it because it's really, really cool. But you just have to know there are a lot of elements happening all at once. I want to show you again, now that I can hold it, how the purple kind of fades. It goes from lighter to darker. So I think that you could do maybe some helical knitting, maybe some alternating skeins as well as the color work at the same time. But that's kind of a lot to concentrate on. You can see how it's just a bit tight going over my head, but I love it and I love my colors. I also wanted to point your attention to a version that actually Jen was wearing in the Nina Chicago interview by Creo. It's really cool because it's kind of a very similar pink, but the background is this sort of minty color. So I'm gonna to link to their kit. I hope it's still up. I'm gonna to link to that underneath this video as well. Thank you so much as always for checking in here at Christy Glass Knits for my shenanigans. And I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about the bouquet sweater. And I'll see you next time. Bye.